So a round of straddles here. One of the things we saw from last night is, is that the players open to 5,000 at 1-2-2. And of course, the 2K ante, the straddle gets an incredible price here. Against the super pro. And Tony will defend. Yeah, that's what I am, sure. You will. <laughs> you will. We are playing 500, 1,000 with a $2,000 big blind ante and with a $2,000 straddle at Hustler Casino Live. Holy moly, this is a big game. Rampage Poker, friend of PokerCoaching.com. He has a lot of content on poker coaching where he was actually coached by super crusher Brock Wilson, and he still is today. They still upload content. He opens it up. From the hijack with King Jack offsuit to $5,000. 2.5 big blinds only. Now you may say, isn't that really, really small in relation to the $2,000 straddle plus ante? And the answer is yes. However, you don't have to make gigantic preflop raises, especially if the players in position are going to fold to a $5,000 raise a lot of the time. And also, especially if the player in the big blind is going to play quite poorly from out of position in general. So I love Rampage's raise size if that is the case. So he does make it 5,000. Over around to Tony G. He's known for talking. He opts to call in the straddle. Let's head to the flop. Oh, wow. Look at this flop, folks. Jack, Jack, 10. So trips against trips. Rampage in a great spot. He's going to bet 3,000. And Tony G here is not going to slow play. He goes up to eight. As we talk about the boards cooperating, it's kind of been slow the last few nights. But this one could get big. Rampage gonna bet three bet trips. Tony G, check race to eight, bet three bet to 25,000. Oh my goodness, Tony, what's he doing? Is he just gonna call? So 63.5. Flop comes, jack of clubs, jack of spades, ten of hearts. There's no more jacks in the deck because Tony G has jack nine and he is smashed by Rampage's king jack. Tony G checks. Rampage goes for a tiny $3,000 bet as he very often should on paired boards in general, especially when Tony G has a lot of trips in his range, which he certainly could. Tony G bumps it up to 8,000. Rampage is having none of it. He makes it 25,000. They're battling back and forth. Tony G thinks, hmm, maybe I don't want to lose a million dollars on this hand. He decides to just call. Let's head to the turn. Here. Big brick on the turn. And a little donk lead here. Pretty unorthodox. Check raise, three bet, and Tony G just going to poke out here with a donk lead on the turn. No raise? And Kind of, I don't know if it's no. freezing Rampage, but he just called. Turn is the three of spades, a complete brick. Unless Tony G randomly has the jack three or the pocket threes, which maybe he'll have every once in a while. Tony G decides to make, as the commentators say, a very unorthodox lead for 25,000. He's probably thinking, please just call, please just call, please just call, please just call. Because when Rampage just calls, jack nine's almost always good. Not this time, but almost always. And... If Tony G gets raised, well, can you let it go? I don't know. You all know that Rampage is known for his massive punts. I think his official name is actually Rampunts Poker, not Rampage Poker. And uh, yeah, I don't really think you can fold Jack-9 against Rampage, so maybe you're just making the pot bigger in a spot where you very easily could be crushed. Whatever. He goes 25,000, and Rampage at this point is thinking, maybe I could be beat. Tony G is also known for some rather unorthodox plays, as we see here. And, I mean, look, I wouldn't put it beyond him to bet 25000 get raised to, let's say, a hundred, and then just rip it all in for a million. Now, I don't think that's what's going to happen every time or anything like that, but it could happen. And imagine you have the King Jack in the spot, and Tony G just puts it in for a million. He could easily have you crushed with pocket tens or ace jack, right? And that would be a nasty spot. <laughs> Anytime you have to put in a million dollars, 500 big blinds effective, counting the straddle... With anything that's not the nuts, you're not loving it. So, look, I think Rampage can probably justify raising on this turn purely because there is now a turned backdoor flush draw available that Tony G could have that you don't really mind pricing out. Plus, Tony G could easily have a draw and be trying to set his price or whatever he's thinking in his mind, and the draws are going to have some equity, right? So I think making it something like 75 or 80 in this scenario is perfectly fine. I realize a lot of action has happened already. Remember, it was bet, raise, re-raise, 
on the flop. So Rangers should be good, but whenever you're playing deep stack, battling cash games, you never really know what's happening. So anyway, Rampage does opt to just call and be a little bit cautious. Let's head to the river. River here is a queen, and now Tony here is going to check. And Rampage Kicker is going to play here. It's obviously, the one thing he's going to be concerned about might be the queen jack. Obviously, he loses the ace jack here, too, but he's still going for value. And Tony G doesn't beat ace king. 110. River is the nasty queen of hearts. Why is the queen of hearts nasty? Well, because Rampage could easily have ace king. And if he decided to get overly optimistic, he could also have king nine or nine eight all of which now crush Tony G's Jack-9. So Tony G opts to check, which I think is definitely good. Rampage goes for roughly a pot size bet. I love it. I think this is a good play. Even though he does lose to some hands in this situation, I think it's a very good spot to just bet for pure value. Now, if you get raised, it's a nasty spot, but I love the bet in this scenario from Rampage. Good job looking for value. Here. Oh, that's a bad card for Rampage. If Tony's thinking about mocking here. This is quite a cooler for Tony G, but now, given the queen came, he may actually have a chance to get away from his trips. You all know me, I don't like folding trips, but maybe this is a spot for it. What I don't know is what do you think Tony G should do in this scenario facing this $110,000 bet from Rampunts? Should he fold, call, raise it up for value, or raise it up as a dirty boy bluff? Pause the video and let me know what you think you should do in the comment section down below. Rampage might have wished that he had maybe bumped it up a little bit on the turn. This is a rough spot for Tony G because the action so far has been pretty wild in this hand. You don't see a whole lot of bet raise re-raises on the flop. You also don't see a whole lot of weird turn leads. I'm not sure what Rampage thinks Tony G's range looks like. This is what you have to always consider whenever you're making kind of abnormal plays. You want to consider what does my opponent think my range looks like. Now, if Rampage thinks Tony G's range is a whole lot of Jack X, and Rampage is betting an amount that Jack X can call. Well, now on this weird leveling, I think you think game, if I think you have a Jack and I think you're calling with a Jack and I'm still betting, well, sounds like a Jack should fold, right? Now you may take that one step further and say that because of that, I think you're going to fold the Jack. Therefore, I should be bluffing the size. Uh, look, I try to not get too involved with these leveling games, especially when I don't really know what's going on. I just try to play reasonable close-ish to GTO poker whenever I don't know what my opponent's doing. And I do know that Tony G is the type of live pro that will try to get in leveling wars. Quite often, the players who enjoy talking a lot at the table do enjoy leveling wars. And sometimes they find themselves in spots where they are completely lost. I'm not saying that's the case for Tony G, but a lot of players who heavily rely on things like table talk or very unorthodox plays Either they are really good at making up, well, to be fair, not even either. They are good at making up value in various ways because their opponents are going to play suboptimally against them, right? Like, say on the turn when Tony G leads, if he never gets raised in the spot, that's good to know because now you know that you can lead and it just takes away one of your opponent's options. When you check the river, if you know your opponent thinks you have trips and they're still betting, but now you can just drastically overfold. So... All this is to say, be careful getting in leveling wars unless you know how your opponents are going to play. And as you play against better and better and better and better and better opponents, the only thing you can possibly think they're going to do with a high degree of certainty is play good, strong GTO poker. And against good, strong GTO poker, if you are heavily deviating from GTO poker, you're going to get demolished. So anyway, what should Tony G do here? I don't know. Pot odds, I would call. Let's see what Tony G actually does. 
Queen? Neither do you. You know that? Like, this, is, this weekend is the first time they've had these in front of and he's going to get paid off. Rampage here. Trips over trips. Jack, yeah. Those are the kind of matchups that we like to see with the board cooperating. Rampage now seven for seven. Has not lost a pot here so far. After much deliberation, Tony G does find the call. Maybe there's some merit in turning this into an insane bluff and just check raising huge. I think that could be pretty saucy because in this scenario, when you have the jack and you have the nine, you block Rampage from having a full house and you also block straights. Now, to be fair, straight may even fold if you check raise big. But having the jack that is often not going to be good here and using that as a bluff, I think, is a pretty nice spot. Now, you do want to always consider, do I actually want to have any check raises here? And if Tony G is sitting here with random pocket queens or queen jack, I think he does want to check raise. So you want to find some bluffs. And in this spot, I do think the jack is probably the most relevant card. Maybe you actually want to have a hand like jack four in this scenario instead of jack nine, because when you have jack four, you don't block some bad straights that Rampage could have, king nine or nine eight that would value bet the river, but then fold to a raise. So maybe the nine's actually not a great card to have, but if Rampage is going to bet with King nine and then call a raise every time, then you'd obviously much rather have a nine, right? So I'm not exactly sure how that nine blocker interacts here. But anyway, Tony G just calls and loses the pot. That's going to be it for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, click the like and subscribe button down below. I would appreciate it. Huge thanks to these players for making lots of great content for us. Thanks to Hustler Casino Live for letting us use their footage. And if you want to see... Another hand from Rampage Poker from this same gigantic cash game session where this time, instead of having his opponent smashed, he decides to run a bluff for about a million bucks. We have that video lined up for you next. Thanks for watching. Good luck. And hope all your value bets get called by worse.